Welcome to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week update. Uh, I am Adolfo Ferranda here, and I am at Nerd Stalker on Twitter with my friend... Greg Gloria, a.k.a. <laughs> Social Greg on Twitter. Sorry, it took a little while, a little uh, slow on the update there, no but problem, hey, Greg. I'm excited. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm excited. Hey, 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 what episode week. is this, buddy? Uh, number 33. So all kinds of stuff. You know, the one of the early <laughs> announcements, if, uh, yeah, go, getting right into it here, it was Microsoft. You know, it's sort of settled for a while. They, uh, you know, d- tablet. It was a tablet, right? Something called the Surface, Microsoft Surface. And when I immediately thought of that, you know, I thought of the the table. Remember that table, that big honking exactly. coffee table thing called Surface, which yeah. was super yeah. cool, but had absolutely yeah. no real application in life <laughs> whatsoever, um, as far as being maybe a kiosk in some conference or something like that. But yeah, so this, this <laughs> tablet that they announced... Um, mm was sort of uh, vaporware-ish in a way, right? Um, It's running full-on Windows 8, apparently, um, and they didn't really let anyone uh, touch it for an expanded amount of time, and they announced this sort of chiclet keyboard uh, tablet cover thing, and the thing has a kickstand too, right, because it's top-heavy, and it seems to favor only sort of landscape mode. Uh, primarily, mm-hmm. uh, it seems like it's it's really what it's designed for. It appears. Um, All right. The the thing with it and it's quad core too, or something like that. And uh, so okay. there there was no battery life mentioned whatsoever. Um, so no one can confirm that, right? Um, we don't know if it's going to be screaming fans loud like the uh, the prototype that they gave out a build or whatever. Um, right. And uh, we we don't even have a price on this thing. Uh, so is is and. I don't even know when it's uh, due to ship or anything. Um, and there's no, I don't believe there was any partners announced. It was, this was made by them, I believe. Um, and so other partners are like, you know, what what the hell, you know, is this kind of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, it's kind of vaporware-ish in a way, if you ask me, you know. Right. I'm sure it's, it's this thing, but um, for one of the stories, weird stories about it too, was that they actually let Danny Sullivan of... Um, uh, search engine land uh, hold uh, the the tablet for a little bit. I think it or or actually oh, handled yeah. it. Oh yeah, that's he, right. And he uh, right. was kind of fiddling with it, and then I believe he started to try to type with it, and they yanked it out of his hands, and which was really weird. And somehow he managed to get it back later or something like that. I heard, oh, and um, he started trying to type on it again, and they said, "Nice try," and they took it away, kind of thing. Um, so, you know, and in the demo for Sanofsky, it crashed once, right? And he, they had to swap out the tablet. Um, so, uh, you know, everyone was really pumped at first and, and was saying, yeah, this thing's going to be, oh, this is so great and this and that. But uh, it feels hmm. very premature. It feels like Microsoft was trying to preempt something, uh, perhaps what we're going to mention later, and perhaps something that, uh, you know, and maybe to take some of the attention away from Apple, who had announced uh, some stuff right before that, uh, their <laughs> announcement. Um, no one's, uh, only a couple, I think Mary, I forget her name, only one person has been able to sort of... Uh, use the keyboard cover uh you know there's a oh, there's really? an actual one okay. with like sort of pushable <clears throat> keys and one sort of like a chiclet thing and i've never had much success with those chiclet type of keypads um and Sucks. Uh, but but she only got to use it i think when it wasn't attached to the tablet so it's kind of like pressing okay. a keyboard <laughs> on the side so not too excited also it's been confirmed that uh if you bought a lumia just to, like i thought you are screwed people they've confirmed it will not be upgradable to windows phone 8 yeah. Uh, so you've been hosed, you've been had, um, you get mango, I believe the latest, uh, update and that's right. it. And right. besides that, you just bought yourself a brick, uh, essentially, um, well, that's a Lumia. Yeah, We're talking the, the top the, of the line Lumia, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, Scott Sign from CNET had a really good article on some of the things that may challenge, uh, the service, you know, mm-hmm. mainly the app store. Right. Right. Uh, that was, I thought that was probably pretty true because windows, RT only run the Metro yeah. apps, so right. right. You know, you got to get that dialed in. Right. I, you mentioned price earlier. I think that's going to be, you know, when you have an Ultrabook as little as seven ninety nine. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to figure out where that right. where the price points are right. for that. Right. Um. You know. Uh, so yeah, not to, not so, not all know, that. Our, it seemed really excited at first, but you know, after you get to digest the information, after a while, you're like, oh, it wasn't a there wasn't a whole lot of meat there, and it felt kind of premature, you know, this whole thing. 
Yeah. Well, let's let's go on to what's a little bit more exciting. Yeah. You know, what conference started today, my friend? Hey, Google I.O. here in San Francisco. So welcome yeah. all all you developers and everything. Uh, this is a very excited time here in San Francisco. And as you many of you probably see on the news already, if you have, or if you've been hip to this at all, um, all kinds of stuff, right, Greg? I mean, we're talking uh, tablets yeah. uh, or a tablet, right? The Nexus 7, I believe, is what it's called. Uh, was probably the biggest yep. news of the day. Um uh, which is a seven-inch tablet, right? Quad-core. Uh, mm. They're claiming nine-hour nice. ba- nine-hour battery life. Uh, it looked very slick in the demo. Uh, one hundred and ninety-nine dollars, man. Um, and uh, this looks like a Kindle killer. Really, is is what it seems like uh, more than anything else. Um, there was a really great article uh, uh, Boy Genius Report did on this thing, uh, mm. saying that you know mm. that Google brought a knife to a gunfight is sort of what what, what one of the writers had claimed there. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a very funny. it's a very interesting uh, uh, take on the whole thing in that you know uh, they kind of screwed their partners in a way is what he's saying by releasing a product that is so uh, bottom of the barrel you know a one ninety nine. Why would any other vendor want to produce a thing and not make any profit on it, right? Because there's no markup there, right? There's no meat to uh, to make any money on the thing. So what is the incentive to build mm. this thing? Um, and, mm. and and um, so what he's saying is that you know uh, Google's an advertising company, uh, so they're really just they're they're just trying to gain more users. This isn't really a play against the iPad so much as it is against um, mm. or um, trying to get the bottom against Amazon. Really, what they're trying to do, you know, Amazon their uh, business sure. isn't isn't really um, isn't tablets either, right? It's uh, selling no, books and these other, so not. they can subsidize this thing. Um, with, with those with that business right and then they get a foothold in into selling their wares uh say apple i mean uh google is an advertising agency uh, or primarily advertising platform right um so th- yeah. it's the same sort of argument um they need more people using their stuff on whatever hardware it is in order to get those eyeballs so that they can pitch it to people buying advertising placement, right? Uh, to, to say we, right. we've got this many eyeballs and this kind of thing. So a very interesting um, article there. Uh, the thing is, is that... Uh, uh, um, the problem is that a- a- Apple has the lion's share of it all right now, uh, and of the mobile, yeah, yeah, of course. And, and talking end to end in terms of the vertical, right? So the whole experience, you know, right. from iTunes all the way to the hard hardware, um, they have the whole buying, whether it's movies or music or, or what have you, mm. uh, really easy, easy, you know, easy to do kind of experience. And so, what's what's the you know compelling reason? So w- the the fight seems to be at this bottom end, at this low end here, is is where. I think Microsoft, Amazon, and uh, Google are identifying opportunity to sort of eat the crumbs, right? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, not only Google screwed their partners, I think that the earlier thing that Microsoft screwed their partners as well. Yeah, so, good point, uh, you know, great point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it's it's partner screwing week. So. <laughs> well, I, I guess, <laughs> it, like yeah, to Microsoft's credit, uh, they're claiming they're not going to build this thing. Um, but we'll see. I, I don't know if I believe that or not. The, the announcement was so vague. Uh, uh, you can't get really much much more than that. But other cool things um, that were announced at uh, Google yes. I.O., uh, the new and, uh, OS Rev, uh, I believe Android OS yes. Rev, uh, Jelly Bean, right? Uh, we're talking uh, yep. Google Plus revs too. We got Google Plus events now. Uh, we've got Google Glass. A rev on that was announced, and oh yeah, um, Google uh, and uh, Google Plus has been nice. announced on tablet also, and and um, Chrome was finally released on Android as well. Uh, the Chrome browser. Wow. Unfortunately, That's you have big. to have uh, Android four and uh, ice cream sandwich to <gasps> to use it. So the lowly lowly, I think, social Greg and Nerd Stalker are. Currently unavailable to for for that modern browser experience, which I hear is fantastic 2. 3. right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, two point three. Another yeah, really interesting sucks. piece of hardware was something called the Nex, uh, Nexus Q. Um, this was a, hmm. a it's like a sphere. It is a sphere, uh, essentially um, that connects to your Ethernet. Um, it's a Wi-Fi type of thing where you can, and it only works with Android. Um, so, so what this device is labeled as a social streaming media player, unquote, right? Uh, that can stream entertainment from Google Play and YouTube to different speakers and television sets. The Nexus Q can be controlled by an Android smartphone or tablet running Android 2.3, Gingerbread, or higher, and will be available for two ninety nine ninety nine, three hundred bucks, right, in the next two to three weeks. Okay. So a, a very experimental, interesting piece of hardware, um, wow, it's kind of an odd niche, 
but uh i i uh i, I look forward it, to, it, to to seeing people using this thing and, and to hear wow, about it more that, that's that that's interesting so is that going to be really the next google tv you know the 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 brick is is apple mm. and then maybe the sphere is uh google yeah i, I don't know <laughs> yeah don't know. right so another odd thing too was Google uh, Google Glass, uh, which I've never really got. Uh, they had a big thing where these guys they uh, ride over Moscone Seven Center, which is sort of in the heart of San Francisco. Here, um, they right. jumped out of a, a blimp and they did this whole paragliding thing down with Google Glass, and it was transmitted to the conference on a big screen to Sergey Brin and, and the uh, attendants attendees. Uh, and then it was they landed on the roof, which was neat. And then some people <laughs> rappelled down the roof, down the side. And then they handed off to some bicyclists who did bike tricks and got up on stage, and you know. And then they mm. handed the glasses off to Sergey, right? Which was um, all fun and stuff, but um, it's you know, uh, Google Glass uh, is a headset, right? And it projects images and data directly onto right. users' eyes. Right. Um, yeah, and it it got a, a big. Uh, a big placement in Google I.O. The glass heads, headset includes a camera and captures pictures, has a processor and memory to store data, yeah, right. a microphone, send and receive voice messages, multiple radios for multiple data communications. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why I would really want to use this thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know either. Um, very <laughs> high end. I use it you know? driving, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, simple first person videos across Google+. Plus. Uh, companies offering Glass Explore Edition for pre-order now at fifteen hundred dollars uh, for Google I/O developers only. Uh, as a product not is not yet ready for mass consumption, is still rough around the edges within Google's uh, own words there. So uh, some some really interesting stuff going on at Google. Um, there is an API that 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 was that was announced quietly, not n not given any real lip service there, which. Um, you're going to be able to sort of like aggregate uh, social data from other social networks. Uh, we're talking Twitter and Facebook um, and mm. other ones too, and pull it into your uh, uh, Google Plus sort of timeline. Uh, what they're trying to do is sort of rep oh, okay. replicate the timeline feature on Facebook and so that you can sort of bulk bolster up your profile and have some history. You know I mean? How you can do with Facebook now and go back and add your baby pictures and it shows up in your sort of timeline, right? of your existence. So, okay. so, uh, go they're, you know, they're really making an effort for Google plus they're, they're, you know, you can tell that they're, uh, there's two big ad, uh, companies and, and let's face it, one is Google and the other one is Facebook. Um, Yes. And they don't want anyone taking that pie. And uh, Facebook has been taking quite a bit of that pie away. And uh, so they need uh, some sort of competitor to that. So they're really trying hard. Yes. Next story, man. Let's go, let's, let's go into some other let's stuff. Let's go to the next Google yeah, story. Yeah, Siri? Yeah. <laughs> or well, no, no, I'm sorry, Maps. Yeah. You're right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Google Maps coordinate. Uh, that connects mobile workers. I thought this was kind of cool because I, I want to give you a twist on this one, um, Adolfo. Cool. But anyway, Google last Thursday and introduced a service for businesses called Google Maps Coordinate, a workforce management application to help uh, companies organize mobile workers, share location data, and collect uh, work-related data on the go. Uh, so this story comes from Information Week. Uh, Thomas Kleber, thank you very much. You. Uh, you know, time calls it marks a leap into the mainstream for the concept of employee surveillance. I thought oh, that God. was so cool when I read that. Jeez. You know. So so you know uh, you know it relies on the Google's map data and collaboration technology. So you know there's it's a productivity thing. Uh, at least that's the angle they're taking, not 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 an employee surveillance thing. We'll always get past that when we, when we uh, Adolfo. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, yeah, none of our bosses can catch us. But um, no uh, comment. What help? What what? Well, what helped motivate Google to build this thing, right? So product manager uh, Dan Chu uh, for Google Maps Coordinate says, you know, uh, you know, a demo that was conducted over Google Plus Hangout makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, IDC's prediction that there'll be 1.3 billion mobile workers by 2015. So all these productivity apps are are out there now, That's right? Awesome. And you see. Yeah, and you know, God, I, I think me and you want to be uh, uh, one billion, uh, one point three billion and two or something like that, yeah, right? Sure. So, uh, so I think that's what motivated them. Uh, you know, they see a market out there, um, see a way to um, also get Google Plus Hangouts kind of uh, 
you know, working with some of their other Google uh, apps. I mean, we talked about it last year. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to see Google integrating more, I think, between their apps mm -hmm. uh, where they haven't done very well in the past. Yeah. You know whether that's successful or not. I don't know. Hey, let's let's go on to the next one. Um, yeah, you know, Mozilla takes talks at Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. What, what's going on there? So I was fortunate enough uh, to attend an uh, HTML5 uh, meetup here, a uh, user group uh, here in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh, not, kindly enough, Microsoft was hosting Mozilla a Mozilla talk at the Microsoft office headquarters in San Francisco here, uh, and I was nice. uh, and I was honored to attend and uh, see Mozilla, who is uh, a, a incredible nonprofit organization that sort of their their mandate is to sort of spread the the word of open standards right and um, the open web and uh, and sort of pr to advocate for those type of solutions and things like that and one of the things that they were talking about was something called boot to gecko uh, we've briefly mentioned it before here on Erdstalker. And what it is, it's mm. an open system uh, which you allows you uh, essentially is a mobile operating system, um, and it's only uh, rely for a developer. All you have to know is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's it, nice. and uh, and you can build apps, and that's the operating system. Um, it's essentially it's a, a rev down version of Firefox. Uh, on mm -hmm. a mobile phone. Uh, right now, what they're targeting is, you know, they're not trying to compete with Apple or, or any of the high-end thing. What they're trying to compete is, like, people in developing countries and uh, people with feature phones and, you know, uh, trying to give them a smartphone type of experience, um, but on a less sort of, sort of lesser hardware or something like that, you know, uh, to not make it so expensive to give this thing away for free. Uh, which is very admirable. So, um, uh, you know, uh, one one of their partners that they're they're going with now is in Brazil. They're going on a major launch down there with a with a carrier and a, and a, nice. and a hardware manufacturer. Um, uh, but it's a very early stage. It's really really impressive. I I got to play with one on, right. on a Samsung device, uh, Samsung uh, okay. smartphone, and it was very snappy. And what they're doing is they're all utilizing. Um, web APIs. So if you know JavaScript, um, it's controlling your phone. There's all these great APIs. So there's like an, a JavaScript API for, let's say, Bluetooth. There's a JavaScript API to control your, uh, uh, your, your camera, right? Um, and, right. and so you have everything. You have a dialer, you have a calendar, you have email. It's the whole deal, right? So every app essentially is an HTML file. It's a, it's a web page, right? Every little app is a web page, but it behaves um, quite like a quite like an app. And what's what's very attractive about this operating system is given that it is HTML, CSS, you can design, retheme your operating system to your heart's content. So, you know, if you, if you wow. don't want a grid of icons as your operating so to look like that or to make it look like Metro, uh, go ahead. You know, it's fully customizable and you can do that. Very impressive wow. stuff. You know, um, there's a lot of web developers. So this is a very tra attractive proposition. Uh, you know, go Google... Um, um, Boot to Gecko, you guys, uh, on the, the Mozilla, I, I believe Mozilla has a wiki for it. Uh, impressive stuff that they're doing. Very impressive. So I highly suggest it was a fantastic talk. And thank you to Microsoft for hosting that amazing talk and the HTML5 mm, user group nice. for, for putting it on. So are you saying that now uh, all those Simeon Nokia, Nokia devices that are out there in Asia maybe have a second life? Yeah, yeah, man. But yeah, absolutely. Why not, right? <laughs> absolutely. Go dust that thing. Eventually, you know, hopefully they'll be able to, to, to port this thing. What they're finding is, is it's difficult right now to sort of install the operating system mm. even for developers because there are proprietary drivers on a lot of those devices. Uh, so mm. so in order to install, you, you yeah, need sure. those kind of those, those drivers for, the, for those particular phones, which are... Are, um, trademarked, right? Patented or whatever, right? So they can't legally do yeah. that. So, uh, yeah, it's a more difficult process right now. A little bit tricky. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, you know, I think uh, uh, companies like Nokia would, would love to have, have something like yeah. that. So, yeah, that's what I thought yeah. about that. Wow, nice, nice, nice story, man. Greg, man, Greg, man. Okay, now we talk about Siri, huh? Yeah. So what's happening with Siri? Well... Well, I thought this was kind of cool that Siri and Yelp, uh, you know, uh, kind of paired up here. So uh, uh, thanks to uh, Por uh, Pornima Gupta of Reuters, uh, I saw the tweet come by and I, uh, and, and I decided to kind of look at this. So, uh, you know, uh, we had the WWDC a few weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, one of the co-founder co and chief executive order of, of, of Yelp, uh, kind of took the stage and, and kind of talked about, you know, 
that uh, Yelp is now kind of hooking up with Siri, which makes a lot of sense. So Yelp and a handful of other major consumer content sites, uh, including Movie Reviewer, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, will be helping to power Apple's Siri, the voice-activated iPhone personal system, oh, as we know awesome. it, right, mm -hmm. on the I iOS 6. So th the story gets pretty good, right, because the relationship between Apple and Yelp illustrates the power struggle on, of how people find what they're looking for over the Internet, yeah, right? Yeah. And 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 I thought, you know, there was this story last year where they were analyzing really Apple's Siri play as as another way of really eroding uh, Google's uh, kind of grasp on search, right? Because this is another search mechanism that doesn't require all these fancy algorithms, right? right? right. Interesting. Uh, you need Siri. All you need is Siri, right? So I, I think. Uh, you know, Yelp and Siri makes a lot of sense because, you know, the local place for you and I are, are what we care about, right? We want to go find a restaurant. Well, Yelp has that, right? But if you could say, find me a restaurant on 3rd and Townsend right now, and I would like an Indian restaurant, what is the nearest one, right? Yeah. And and that's uh, with, with at least five-star ratings or whatever, you know, right. Yelp ratings, whatever. And and. And I think that's the play here. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of cool. You know, Apple really is kind of clever here is saying, okay, let's, let's tie in with some of these uh, well-known uh, apps like uh, – or web apps like uh, uh, Yelp, and wow. let's see if we could get Siri to do something. Wow. Pretty cool, Yeah, huh? very cool. Everyone's trying to get in everyone else's business nowadays, huh? Very cool. <laughs> well – Choice is yeah, wonderful. I mean, Choice I mean, is Google good. It's <laughs> good for us. Yeah. Good, good, good for you Damn and I. Straight. So Speed round. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, speed round. speed round. So you're up first, right, man? Yeah, man. So you this story know. is a good one. Yeah. Uh, Louis C.K. directs us, oh, direct yeah. sells tickets to, to his <laughs> next concert tour. No fees, no scalpers. So, yeah, this one, thanks to uh, Corey Doctorow for this great summary from Boing Boing. All right. So having disrupted the traditional concert DVD distribution system with his groundbreaking DRM free yes. $5 download video, comedian Louis C.K. is now preparing to go on tour, and he's calling to cut out all the sleazy ticket brokers, slimy scalpers, and the other middlemen uh, and sell oh, the he's tour. Going after those guys yeah, now. yeah. Wow. And he's doing it again. He's selling the tour tickets <laughs> direct to fans. So uh, very cool. Uh, tickets are a flat. <laughs> they're going to be a flat 45 bucks each. And he says he'll make uh, less than he would if he uh, went with an expensive ticketing service, but he wants to make his shows uh, affordable and stuff. And he's taking along taking along a lot of the risks too, obviously. So uh, so far, wow. I hear this has uh, been a smashing success. Um, and uh, all the best of luck to him. So very cool. I love to see this. Wow. Well, breaking the infrastructure, another, yeah. another, another, he does another yeah. one. I, I love it. You know, he did it with uh, direct sales of his uh, his show, and now he's going after tickets, like you said. I love that. Yeah, next one. Uh, MIT platform uses smartphone data to detect social and uh, behavior trends. Uh, so thanks to Emma Hutchings of uh, PSFK, um, MIT uh, Media Lab graduates, uh, are building an open source platform that simplifies mobile data collection and processing. So their startup, uh, Behavio, was awarded uh, th about 355000 uh, from the Knights uh, News Challenge mm -hmm. Grant. Mm -hmm. And they plan to create a software development kit for programmers to build apps and with smart sen sensors. So what I'm thinking, you know, what the interesting play here is, uh, you know, and I like everyone in, in the audience kind of think about this, is, you know, things with like Connect Technology now, could really play into some of these behavior modeling and, and make some make cool advertising models. You know, if I'm looking at a video and I'm going, like, oh, God, or I'm, I'm, is, is Adolfo falling asleep watching this movie? <laughs> you know, it'll detect that and, and it'll bring, bring some feedback back. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, so that's awesome. That, that's, that's my, yeah, speed round. <laughs> the next one up, what do you have there? Yeah, so this one, Judge Orders halt to Samsung sales of the Galaxy Tab. Thanks to SF Gate for this story. Ooh, um, so yeah, you know, this is very interesting. So a judge late Tuesday ordered Samsung Electronics Company to halt sales of its Galaxy 10.1 tablet computer. While the court considers Apple's claim, the South Korean tech giant illegally copied the design of the popular iPad. Uh, what's really particularly interesting is some of the quotes that this judge says. So U.S. District Judge uh, Lucy Ko said Apple Incorporated's lawsuit uh, appeared likely to prevail. Uh, quote, Apple hasn't established a strong case on the merits, Co said. Uh, Co had earlier said the two products are, quote, virtually indistinguishable, unquote. And uh, another quote, she said, uh, <laughs> although 
Although Samsung has a right to compete, it does not have a right to compete compete unfairly by flooding the market with infringing products, Co wrote in her Tuesday order. She said Apple would be irreparably harmed if sales of the Galaxy 10.1 continued. Um, she said, quote, we, uh, we will take necessary legal steps and do not expect the ruling to have a significant impact on our business operations uh, is, as we possess a diverse range of Galaxy Tab products, uh, Samsung said in a statement. Um, so yeah, uh, a very, very interesting set of quotes from a judge. All right, my next one. Uh, another, uh, another kind of uh, tech thing. Um, Nissan delivers a hands-on tour of the new Pathfinder with oh, Connect. Cool. We were just talking about Connect earlier, weren't we? Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. So, um, you know, this comes from Alice Chan from PSFK. I, 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 I listen to a lot. I, I read a lot of PSFK things. Kind of cool stuff. Um, so, uh, they on the 2013 Nissan Pathfinder uh, digital agency Critical Mass, which is kind of a neat name, has debuted a full immersive experience of a vehicle interior fueled by innovative use of Microsoft's Connect technology. So, um, you know, instead of using hand gestures, what the, the, this article was saying that they 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 were trying to model behavior around the car and inside the car. You know, and try to um, help the person while they're doing that. You know, if you're going around the car doing, doing things. You know, it, the Connect technology is supposed to detect stuff like that. So I, I thought, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, a use of Connect technology and um, use of Pathfinder. Our our agency was talking to Nissan. You know, we're connected with Japan a lot, and they were looking at uh, user interfaces like this. So it was kind of cool to see uh, kind of the first thing come out of that. Tip time, tip time. Tip time okay, Social Greg's tip of the week, uh, my tripler tip of the week. Uh, how to put your iPad on privacy lockdown uh, from, uh, thank you, uh, Dylan Love from uh, Business Insider um, at SAI. Uh, so he, they provide eight tips, uh, which is on a slider in this article, kind of help you secure your iPad. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, you know, it goes through some of the basics. Um Kind of like uh, anywhere from passcode lock, right, and encryption to apps that actually encrypt your data and uh, password protect individual apps. So take a look at that. I'll have the links on the backstories as well as on the uh, site. So uh, lock your lock your iPad, folks. And what's yours, man? <laughs> so yeah. So my tip is thanks to Konigi for this tip. Um, Protomoto. So what Protomoto is, it's an excellent showcase of prototyping and wireframing tools created to help uh, designers oh, find a tool nice. uh, that's suited to the specific devices or platforms they're designing for. Uh, the site developed by uh, Paper in Ecuador uh, will be adding uh, more filters in the future as they uh, continue to evolve the resource uh, so that you can browse the tools based on features. It's very cool. I do a lot of designing uh, prototyping stuff in Keynote, actually, which is a fantastic yeah. tool. And they had a plethora right. of uh, awesome some suggestions for that. Um, I know a lot of people use Action and other type of tools as well. So, and Balsamica. Check it out. Really cool. Thanks to Konigi for the tip. Protomoto.com. What are the events coming up? I don't know. Uh, talk about Code ED. Okay. Or, yeah, yeah so Code Ed. Uh, well, Code ED is uh, thanks uh, yeah, to, again, Microsoft. After the uh, Mozilla Butegecko talk, uh, there was these two-minute lightning talks, and this young lady went up and spoke about this really amazing uh, program called uh, Code, CodeED.org. And what uh, Code Ed mm -hmm. uh, does is they teach gr uh, girls how to code. And uh, Code Ed brings nice. computer science to middle school girls from uh, undeserved communities. Uh, they partner with schools and programs uh, serving yes. uh, low-income girls and provide yes. them with volunteer teachers, computer science offerings, uh, and computers. Um, CodeEd is seeking uh, volunteer teachers with tech backgrounds to uh, teach fun introductory HTML courses to these girls. Um, so Teach Tuesdays, October uh, 2 through uh, 30, 5 to 7 p.m. at Smart NSF. Uh, the training support, laptops, teaching materials from CodeEd, women encouraged to apply. If you're interested in teachings, uh, check out uh, on Wednesday, July 11th, um, um, 6 to 7.30 p.m. in San Francisco at Switchfly, which is uh, 601 Montgomery Street on the 16th floor, uh, Pack Heights Room in San Francisco. Or just learn more. Go to, go nice. check out www.codeed.org and contact Mary Ann <laughs> Joe. Ja Ely. Sorry if I butchered your name, uh, Marianne, or Joanne Pons. <laughs> so anyways, okay. go to codeed.org. Okay. Check them out. 
Is there any SF New Tech nice. stuff coming up or no? Yeah. Well, we just finished one up where uh, I broadcast TV won uh, right. the, the Audience Choice nice Award, job. which I thought was kind of yeah. cool. I might try to use them. And, in fact, actually look forward to uh, probably one of our interviews uh, coming awesome. up with uh, Sam Rahimi of I broadcast TV. Cool. And, uh, but uh, the next one is July 10th. Uh, actually, I'll be on the stage, believe Woo-hoo! it or not. Um, I'm going to do a browser uh, browser uh, demo. So, You're on uh, social, Greg. Look for that. Oh, absolutely. Please. I need all the <laughs> cheering I can get. I'm going to be nervous as hell, nice. Paul. But um, anyway, um, hey, if you want to contribute to our so- show, just use the hashtag, uh, hashtag NRDSTK, and we'll mention it on the podcast. Or go to YouTube, Nerd Soccer TV, uh, or just go to iTunes Store. Please go to iTunes Store. Subscribe to our podcast, and don't forget to give us a five-star rating. Please. Okay, well, and, and uh, how do they get a hold of you, Mike? Yes, yeah, so I am at NerdStalker on Twitter. You can feel free to email me, Adolfo at NerdStalker.com. I'd love to hear from you. And Greg, how about you? Hey, hey you can reach me at SocialGreg at NerdStalker.com or reach me on Twitter at SocialGreg. I'd love to hear from you guys. Anyway, thanks a lot, man. Uh, we'll see what the uh, postscript of the Google I.O. will be next week, I guess, on yeah, the show. Yeah, we should. Yeah, the dust and settles. other things going on. Oh, let the dust settle then. And we have uh, 4th of July next week. Yeah. So let's see what we can do for a podcast, uh, maybe a 4th of July podcast. Cool. We'll see. So thanks for listening right, and watching, people. See you next week. Okay. Be careful out there. <laughs>